Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Ingram. This is The Ingram Angle. Thank you, as always, for being with us tonight. Yes, we're really winning. That's the focus of tonight's angle. We're going to win. We're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to win. You stink. You're going to win. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> now, even the newspaper that spent, what, the past seven years trying to tear apart Donald Trump is beginning to see the writing on the wall. Now, the Colorado Supreme Court decision to strike him from the primary ballot was a bridge too far, even for judicial activists. Senior writer Ruth Marcus, considered one of the Washington Post's most senior and really well-respected writers, put it bluntly. The best outcome for the court and the country would be for a unanimous court to clear the way for Trump to run. Look. They know Trump is going to win the case from the Colorado Supreme Court and that any other outcome would set a match to all already fraying national fabric. I made that point last night. And even the uber-liberal website, I love this, Slate, says the case should be reversed 9-0. But that's the only, the only latest, I think, of what will end up being a series of wins for America's constitution, for our prosperity, security, even for our culture. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I've never been more optimistic about America's prospects, America's future, than I am today. But unlike a president whose party believes that America is intrinsically racist and sexist, we don't need to pretend to be optimistic and pretend to love the country. We are optimistic and we do love this country. No wonder we're winning and they're losing. Now, their embrace of economic socialism, neo-Marxism, wokeism, and globalism, it's proving to be a political and practical disaster. A growing consensus of Americans, and I'm talking about white, black, brown, Asian, men and women, younger and older voters, are rejecting the policies and the ideas of Democrats and the far left. Money has been a little bit tighter. Things get, have gotten a lot expensive, more expensive, uh, actually. Everything is going up so much, so it's kind of reduced my spending amount this year. This is the worst I've ever seen it. And I've been through, I was here through the drug epidemic. I was here. It wasn't as bad as it is now. D.C. is under siege, and uh, we need help. Good. Now, which side do you want to be on? The side that believes in strong borders or the side that believes scenes like this are acceptable? Are you on the side that believes that energy independence means freedom or on the side that wants to ban your gas car, your gas stove? How about the side that wants to preserve history? Or do you want to be on the side that wants to tear it all down, melt statues and furnaces and put up monuments to George Floyd? The side that believes in hard work and merit, or the side that believes in firsts, that firsts somehow matter more? Do you want to be on the side that believes that men are men and women are women, or the side that wants to protect children? Or do you want to be with the people who want to confuse children and panders to those who celebrate mutilating their sexual organs? To parents of transgender children, Affirming your child's identity is one of the most powerful things you can do to keep them safe and healthy. To parents and children alike, please ask for help and know this, you're so brave, you belong, and we have your back. We're going to win. Our ideas are better and their ideas are proven failures. Now, this is why Joe Biden, despite getting help from the richest sectors of society, is spiraling downward. After 1,066 long days in office, this is where Joe Biden sits in comparison to other U.S. presidents, lower than all of them, at 38.9 percent. Now, no matter what they've done to try to convince people, for instance, that Bidenomics, it's really working, listen to us, or that the border is secure, there's no crisis here, or that Ukraine is right on the verge, right on the verge of winning, just give us another $50 billion or that Trump's Hitler and Trump's never going to leave office if elected. None of it is working. None of it. 
Democrats spend all their time arguing that Trump's a threat to democracy, while they themselves seem very threatened by next year's democratic process. The New York Times noting that, once again, Democrats find themselves looking toward American institutions to stop Mr. Trump, whom they view as a mortal threat to democracy. For many, this is the kicker, for many, it may be more pleasant to think about a judicial endgame that stops Mr. Trump than envisioning the slog of next year's likely rematch against President Biden. <laughs> now, the slog of next year's rematch? They don't even realize that they're proving our point. The great defenders of democracy believe that campaigning, you know, actually winning over voters, is a burden. And in a sense for them, I guess, with his record, it is. But beyond Trump, our bench is very strong. Governors like Ron DeSantis, Kim Reynolds of Iowa, Glenn Youngkin in Virginia, Greg Abbott, Texas, Bill Lee, Tennessee, Christy Nome, South Dakota, Tate Reeves in Mississippi, many more. That is a very strong bench with a real track record of success. But who do the Democrats have? What, the squad? Going to dine out on them? Newsom? He couldn't beat Ron DeSantis in a debate. Kathy Hochul? Oh, J.B. Pritzker? He'll try to buy his way into office. I will take those matchups any day of the week against any of our people in the future. Now, we haven't even mentioned Josh Hawley, J.D. Vance, Elise Stefanik, all very strong voices for the future. And it's not just on those economic issues that we've talked about so much in the past year that we're seeing growing support. Social conservatism is also on the rise while liberalism is waning. That, my friends, is great news. Really, when I thought about it, I thought about writing this as my last uh, angle for the year. Really, it's, it's ever since the 2008 financial crisis and the rise of Obama, what that meant, that many on the right, and sometimes I have uh, felt this way, have been a little bit on the defensive. At times, it's been painful for all of us to see the radical changes pushed by the left and the weakness, the utter weakness of so many who should have fought back harder and pushed back harder. But now, time to push away that pessimism, because the momentum is on our side. The left has gone way too far. You know, I like to say they've gone so far left, they've left America. And its supporters in the establishment, they have no nothing left, I think, but what? Threats, intimidation, and shaky old Joe Biden. So now is the time for everyone, and I mean everyone on our side, to be unflappable, be courageous, to go full throttle and take the successful policies that are already working in places like Florida and Texas to all 50 states. And that's The Angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.